uh, Congresswoman Frankel. Thank you, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank everybody for a great discussion to the panel. So I try to, I think I bring some common sense to this because I was a working mother and now I'm a working grandmother. And uh, I, I will say that both as a working mother and a working grandmother, I do, do always look forward to the nap time. Uh, and I say that because, listen, taking care of children is a 24-hour job. It is not, not just nine to five. And so, uh, you know, just with all, with all due respect to some of, to one of the panelists' comments, I think that it is happy, fulfilled parents that are best for children. And uh, hopefully we're not at the point where the government des decides what will make a parent happy and fulfilled. So I really think to, for this discussion, you know, the, the uh, first question is, what's the public interest in having a good child care system that is equitable? Uh, and that is, I think, well, I've heard a lot of reasons today, including uh, the well-being of children and the, uh, the need for our economy for parents to be able to get uh, to work. And I, I don't even think the issue is why... Uh, we are having what we call a she session. I mean, the fact of the matter is whether somebody is out of work because they don't have daycare or whether they are out of work because they don't have a job, we are going to get to a point where hopefully people will have jobs. And if the child care industry is decimated, they're not going to have child care. And so I think this is a very, very important uh, issue. And just to uh, uh, say, and I know Brenda Lawrence can confirm this, the Democratic Women's Caucus will make uh, child care uh, at top of our priority to make sure that this industry is stable and uh, fair. Uh, I also want to say this, a child care worker should not have to be on food stamp. And I, I do want to uh, ask, I'm going to ask this question in terms of the, the pay uh, for child care workers, and, and that is, how, how does the low pay impact the turnover, for example? Uh, and, and what are your specific suggestions on how we uh, up the pay for our child care workers? And then finally, before you answer the question, I wanted to say this. Uh, again, common sense approach. For, for parents to go to work, you need a job, right? And what's the second thing you think of? What's, what am I going to do with my children? And you actually think about that before you say, what's the road like? What's the bridge that I'm going to have to go to get to work? And so child care has to be part of our, our infrastructure. But that, I, I yield to if someone answer my question about the, the low pay and the turnover. Ms. Botak, teach, I think you're shaking your head. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, I mean, I'm sure uh, Georgia can also speak to that, but I mean, right now, child care uh, workers on average make less than $12 an hour. Um, and as I noted in my testimony, over half um, need to turn to some form of public assistance or support in order to make ends meet. And so if, if providers are having trouble making ends meet in a job, uh, not only are they more stressed, not only are their families more stressed, but there's more turnover in the industry because people don't see um, don't, don't see a stable job that has long-term growth for them. Um, child care providers are exhausted. <laughs> they have been the heroes on the front line sacrificing so much, uh, not only during the pandemic, during which, I mean, I, they've been on the front lines, but before that, they've been holding up our economy on their shoulders uh, for poverty wages. And I think uh, this pandemic has laid bare those inequities, and it's exacerbated them. And we have a choice going forward. We don't do this on the cheap. We can't do this without big federal public investment um, for the very reasons that you said. Child care is infrastructure. Child care is education. Children's brains develop most quickly between the ages of zero to five. It's in our interest to make sure that they are in loving and high quality settings, whether that's at home or whether that is in a center. And so this is a public good. Um, like K through 12 education, like roads and bridges, and we have been investing in it or disinvesting in it as though it is not for a long time. Um, and yeah, yeah. But a quick question: COVID and childcare. What is? Uh, can someone comment on that? Yeah. Uh, 
Sure. We, we have found that child care providers are really great at infection control. It's part of the everyday uh, work that a child care provider does with young babies and, and um, young children. We found that, that children really are safe in a well-run child care center um, that is using all the safe and health and safety guidelines and are able to operate safely in, even in the, the pandemic. So we've been incredibly proud of the way that our providers have stepped up, implemented these new health and safety guidelines, and kept the children uh, in their care safe. Thank you. Yield back, Madam Chair.